Hey guys, welcome to Skyworld, the capital of Uzbekistan. Welcome to Tushkent. It's the largest city of Central Asia with a population of 2.9 million. It's a city of white avenues and green alleys and architecture from different periods like Soviet architecture, modern architecture, and of course, magnificent minarets and mosques. Now it also has a great variety of cuisine from every part of the world, but most importantly, Uzbek cuisine. So let's get to know more about the skin Tuchkin lies in the northeastern part of the country. Once it was an ancient city on the Great Silk Road from China to Europe, then it was the fourth largest city of the USSR. Now it is gradually transformed to a modern world-class metropolis. The center of the city is Amir Timur Square. It's a plaza with fountains and esplanades around the statue of Amir. Amir Timur Square. Timur, a legendary ruler from the 1300s this is the first place most tourists go to Tashkin gets plenty of foreign tourists and this is Sam um, it's a really interesting city I mean it's got a lot of interesting monuments like this one and lots of cool spots around the city that you can take the metro which has been really fun we've kind of been on the metro all day so what's your most favorite type of food so far um, I mean how can you go wrong with plums and there's that I forget what it's called but the one out by the, the television tower it's got a supposedly best plov in the city and it was really good yeah I would say Tashkent exceeded what I was expecting I didn't really know what to think about before coming here I just kind of booked the trip and here I am and this is where you find the famous Uzbekistan hotel that received its first guest in 1974 it was part of a large-scale restoration of the city after the 1966 earthquake that destroyed half of the scant it's one of the classic examples of soviet architecture some call it brutalist like the style of a like raw concrete type of architecture and we continue our tour around the square there are lots of restaurants and museums like amir timur museum you know it's important because you can find it on a local banknote after uzbekistan became independent in 1991 they had to revive the nation's spiritual and cultural heritage and recognize the historical figures that played an important role in the world history like amir timur also known as timberlane he was able to unite the central asian lands he promoted science education culture music and poetry the history of tashkent took a sharp turn after the 1966 earthquake half the city was destroyed this is an actual clock that stopped at the exact time of the earthquake more than 300,000 people lost their homes and the huge reconstruction began which brought people from the ussr republics who volunteered to help all the new buildings were designed by architects from moscow and they were Able to withstand the strongest of earthquakes, they labeled this architectural style seismic modernism. The city was restored in three and a half years, and Tushkin became one of the best Soviet cities. I met these guys at the earthquake memorial known as Monument of Courage. They just came back to Tashkent after 30. Monument of Courage. Years in Israel, let's see what they have to say foreign. System today, it has four lines and 43. Stations, most stations are like works of art and reflect typical Uzbek motives like cotton agriculture and such, but some stations stations really stand out like the cosmic station or turkestan station one of the most recent ones while pretty impressive this is basically a museum and a very affordable one the entrance is just 15 cents good news is that now it's okay to film videos in most places even in the subway besides the subway they also have a network of buses and a single ride on a bus is 15 cents also Despite that Tuchkin is still a car dependent city and the number of cars keep increasing every year driving style of the locals leaves much to be desired trust me I've driven in over 20 countries and whose big drivers are some of the most reckless ones one of the worst things about driving into Skint is there are plenty of U-turns just like this one and it creates a lot of excellent like situations where people are honking and those driving in the left lane always have to go to the right because those people making the U-turn are always in your lane so I always try to stay in the middle lane if you think everybody's a professional and they know how to drive in this situation it's not it's not like that because there's plenty of accidents we've seen like a dozen accidents already good thing is that taxi rides are dirt cheap most of the time you're not going to pay more than one or two dollars Josh Kent has changed dramatically over the last few years many new parks business centers were constructed and now they're there's a real construction boom going on touch can't just turn it into a real modern metropolis with a good choice of restaurants and the nightlife let me show you some of the cool locations Tashkent City Park Tashkent City Park it's a brand new district with modern apartment complexes and a great park that was finished in 2019 it's super modern there's an artificial pond and a music fountain there's also planetarium and a 7d movie theater there are lots of restaurants coffee 
Shops and scenic locations, while Tushkan City Park you know impressive and with. The way things are going there's so much construction going on that I think you won't be able to recognize a city 5 to 10 years from now foreign. Thank you. Another example of the modern trash can is Magic City Park. It's a fairy tale like park with colorful houses. Magic City Park. Great place for a family weekend. There's a movie theater, an aquarium, a water show, many restaurants and cafes and shops. A lot of shopping options and also it's a park and it's just a beautiful area you know kind of reminds you like Disneyland oh you know fountains they always make it so refreshing I love it I love it in fact uh Tashkent is modern and traditional at the same time business and high-rise districts coexist with traditional Uzbek bazaars and old low-rise communities where everyone knows each other they call these communities Mahalas let's take a walk around one of them it's got a very special vibe to it you know there's a river down below almost makes you feel like you're in Venice at one point but if you look over here you almost feel like you're in some Arabian quarter you know like in an old town or some I don't know Zanzibar people are so friendly this gentleman invited us to his house for some tea his family has lived in this house for decades then we saw some ladies picking up walnuts this almost feels like countryside right right but we're actually in the middle of the city foreign go to the center of Plav it's right by the famous TV tower they have several varieties and you can watch the entire cooking process it's a whole show and trust me you're gonna love it sure juicy pieces of lamb or beef on a skewer you can't go wrong with that if you love meat you gotta try shish kebab or just kebab you know it's a meat honest cure it's been pre-marinated and cooked over fire on wonderful i ordered lamb but you can order beef or chicken whatever you like also we got some veggies fresh salads and lots of onions smells fantastic let's dig in and how can you say no to samsa of course you can those are delicious meat pies one of the most favorite snacks in tushkan and all of the very popular pie and meat pie and it's super super cheap let's see what's inside oh the smell the smell is good i might have another one also you can add some sauce delicious personally i love us baked soups like sherpa it's a lamb and vegetable soup or like mine it's a noodle soup with meat they're both thick and very substantial price wise the further off you go from the tourist places the cheaper it gets how much do you think i paid for this lunch plaw of bread samsa and some tea 1.5 dollars not expensive at all there's a countless number of parks and many of them represent different cultures like the japanese garden it's a japanese garden nice green getaway right in the city center now i've never been to japan and this is the closest thing to japan over here let's enjoy some serenity and you know in every japanese garden there's got to be those colorful colorful fishes so let's find them oh there they are where's my fishing rod ironically it was initially built by japanese prisoners of war in 1947 there's a small pond and you can rent a paddle boat at Seoul National Park, you'll find typical Korean buildings, artificial ponds with water lilies and rare plants. Seoul National Park. From South Korea, the creation of the park was financed by Korea to promote the spread of South Korean culture park. Of the reason Uzbekistan has so many Koreans is because in the 1930s, the USSR forcefully relocated over 170,000. Koreans from the far east of Russia to Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, that's why you'll find a lot of Korean restaurants, shops, and other buildings all over the city, for example, they construct in this new shop and district called Korean Man. Pretty nice, this is what it looks like, and this is what it's going to look like. When it's finished, there are other great parks in the city, like Echo Park, it's a modern park with sports facilities, very family friendly, and it's a popular place for different festivals. To celebrate 30 years of independence, they recently opened New Uzbekistan National Park. This is what it looks like. There are about 70 universities and colleges in Tushkent. Let's talk to some students. Technology is America. Subscribe. The best university in Uzbekistan is Westminster International University. All right now, let's take a look at the major sites right next to Amir Timur Square is a street that is called Tashkent Broadway. It's a popular walking street a pretty nice place to relax to cool down in the shade of perennial trees there are lots of street artists food vendors and ping pong tables i love ping pong foreign is that all these trees in september almost october and they're still green and everything's blooming it's just so beautiful i like that because the city is in the middle of steps i was expecting everything to be yellow by now but it seems like it's the middle of the summer wonderful okay you got it regular pulleys and you got police on horses. This building is known as Zarafshan and it was built in 1974 during the during the Soviet days and at the time it was the largest restaurant in Central Asia. It was so big three stories high three stories below but nowadays it's more of a mall it's mall it has cafes restaurants and everything let's see what it has to offer today let's walk up. 
These stairs there's a fountain in the middle. I love this area. I can't believe it was just one restaurant occupying all this space. God. The street takes you from Amir to Moore Square to Master Calic Maidane or the Independent Square with fountains during. The service times it was called Lenin Square. This is the Independent Square Interstate and this is called the Arch.